that's the thing that's blowing my mind more than anything else in 2023 is that healthcare is moving at the pace that it is with this technology. Is it really and moving faster finally? It is, is it? moving so fast. Why, why did they go from not moving fast to moving fast? Is it just because it's so broken? And they're so exhausted and they, they're finally ready to capitulate and use the technology? Yeah, we just pushed way past the point. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Crowdbotics. Great ideas can change the world. And Crowdbotics is the fastest way to turn those ideas into code. Get a free scoping session for your next big app idea at crowdbotics.com slash twist. Vanta. Compliance and security shouldn't be a deal breaker for startups to win new business. Vanta makes it easy for companies to get a SOC 2 report fast. Twist listeners can get $1,000 off for a limited time at vanta.com slash twist. And LinkedIn marketing. To redeem a free $100 LinkedIn ad credit and launch your first campaign, go to linkedin.com slash next unicorn. Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. Today, another amazing episode of our The Next Unicorn series. If you want to see all the startups we featured in this over the years, this week in startups.com slash next unicorns. What is the idea behind the show? We find promising companies that we think could change the world. And uh, just last week, I interviewed Andy Beck. He's building Path AI. If you remember that, uh, it helps make pathologists superhuman, right? They get a 3D model, they look through the microscope. And it makes it easier to diagnose things like cancer, maybe more accurately, will drive treatment and uh, hopefully um, extend people's lives and suffer a lower suffering, right? Great, great mission. Today, another AI founder in the healthcare space, Dr. Shiv Rao is a cardiologist teacher, former corporate VC, don't hold it against him, and the CEO and co-founder of Abridge. Now, Abridge, you ask, uh, what is that amazing AI platform? Well, it takes verbal conversations between doctors and patients, and it converts them into what the industry calls, I believe, SOAP notes. SOAP notes stand for subjective, objective, assessment, and plan. Basically, the concept is to save doctors and healthcare professionals a ton of time, maybe reduce the errors, and again, reduce suffering, increase lifespan, so that the human species can enjoy more of the limited precious time we all have on the planet. Welcome to the show, Shiv. Thanks so much, Jason. How has the last five years been with uh, the ascension of the show Secession <laughs> and everybody telling you, Shiv, like on the show. I love that character. That must be yeah, incredibly I just, annoying. <laughs> uh, I love the show. I just sort of nod politely and wish they were likening me to the prison knife. But, you know, probably it's, it's all the same thing. I think that was the inspiration for her character yeah. was uh, <laughs> the name Shiv was uh, to that. I mean, in the what do they call it? Prestige TV era. Yeah. From Sopranos to Secession. I, I got to think it's in my top three of all time. Yeah. I mean, totally. just so good. I mean, it's the Sopranos and Secession, and then I got to fight for my number three spot. Totally. And, uh, yeah, it's just incredible. Uh, so how long have you been working uh, on the company? Yeah. And it's we, uh, for people who want to check out the website, it's abridge.com. Yep. A-B-R-I-D-G-E. So we started a bridge in 2018. And in 2019, I'd say like it was it was all in. Like we were we were we were going at it. And in 2018, when we started, um, I was juggling a couple different positions. I was sort of unwinding from that corporate VC role at a large health system, and we were also getting our research chops going inside the company because we're an AI native company. So we're dealing with lots of data. We have a lot of AI researchers. A lot of annotations that needed to happen when we first started the company in order to have a straight face, you know, coming out mm. with a product that truly was powered by proprietary technology. So 2019 is where things got started, started to get very real. Mm. And fast forward though to 2023, I mean, it's insane. Like I'd say the last six months for us, maybe, maybe even eight months for us has just, has just been like game changing. It's just been sort of like slow, slow, slow. And then suddenly, it doesn't feel like tailwinds. It feels like a tornado. Mm. And there's two tailwinds going going on for us right now. One tailwind is just the industry. Like the, the moment in healthcare right now is such that clinician burnout, staffing shortages, labor shortages are one of the first priorities for every single health system executive out there. They need to solve that problem. It's mission critical. And the other tailwind 
is generative AI because everybody understands this technology now. And mm-hmm. not only do they understand it, they use it in their daily lives. So they're open to it. They want to try it and they believe in it. And that's not where we were even last year, like in November of 20, you know, 2022, we, we held a dinner for a bunch of VIPs in healthcare and it was teaching them about generative AI. And this was two months before ChatGPT came out. And so when, you know, when, when it busted open, everyone called us like, oh, we get it now. Like what you were talking about a couple months ago, we're ready. Let's yeah. try this. And you're like, what I've been working on for five years. Yes, you've. It is interesting how something uh, can just break uh, the dam, and then everybody's like, they go from being like, I would never even ride in an electric car, and then they're like, you know, uh, how when can I get one, right? And uh, what's the wait time, and how many can I buy? You know, we, we just it's, it's, it's these revolutions are like slow, 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 and then boom, they just arrive. So one of the things I've noticed is. The ability to just understand what people are saying uh, and get it accurate has changed dramatically in just two or three years. I was one of those guys who kept trying Dragon Dictate yeah. 20 years ago. I remember attorneys 30 years ago having me install this stuff with headphones and training for two or three hours to get, yeah. and it would have them say these words over and over again. And now, you know, I start looking at, uh, I was looking at the Zoom transcript, and you can watch the Zoom transcript in real time during a call. I didn't know you could do that. And I was interviewing um, uh, Dharmesh, the CEO or the co-founder and CTO of HubSpot, and I was watching our discussion yeah. in a live transcript, and I was like, it's completely accurate now. Yeah. Explain yeah. to the audience how it went from being, you got to train this thing for three hours to be a disaster, <laughs> yeah. or less of a disaster. Siri can't call your spouse or get the, you know, put the Beatles white album on for you to all of a sudden now it's doing transcripts perfectly. And and it's not just the doing them really well now, it's also doing them multilingual. Like two days ago, <laughs> crazy. I, I, actually, two weeks ago, a federally qualified health center. So a, a health system center that is caring for a lot of Medicaid patients patients from many different backgrounds, um, social and um, cultural. And they asked us, they actually challenged us if uh, we'd be willing to let them come on a demo Mm. and allow them to actually run the demo, uh, which I'd love to go through with you. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it right now. Yeah. yeah, And and speak in multiple like languages. Um, Wow. So they came in and spoke in Brazilian, Portuguese and Haitian Creole. And we still, and English, and we still created yeah. one English note at the end of this and structured all the data and did all the other sort of manual tasks that uh, clinicians have to do. Um, and uh, needless to say, we're, we're still talking to them. Yeah, I mean, that's that's quite an eclectic collection of dialects there. I went, no Farsi or no Farsi. Iroquois, or you didn't yeah. want to go back to some Aztec, uh, you know, Egypt, <laughs> ancient Egyptian <laughs> language we've never actually heard before. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's pretty crazy. We're going to literally be able to take languages that no human has ever heard before and, and probably figure them out uh, yeah. based on all other dialects. So let's do a little demo here for those of yeah. you who are not watching. Well, what the hell are you doing? Go to youtube.com slash this weekend and sign up and watch these incredible demos or we'll sportscast it for you. We'll describe what's on the screen. If you're driving, please totally. do not watch YouTube when you're driving. Totally. Unless you're in cruise. If you're in cruise, in the backseat of a cruise or a Waymo, you can do that. So I, I can share a little bit, like a, a couple lines of like high level context before to just Please. set the stage for, for the demo. Um, everything that we're building at the company is really based on a thesis that when you think about it, healthcare is all about people and they're having conversations. So they could be having conversations like, like this over video, mm-hmm. telemedicine. They could be having conversations over the phone or call centers. And certainly most of healthcare happens in person. Mm. And we're omni-channel, like we're, we have a Swiss army knife approach. We can be a part of all those conversations wherever they are. And that's where our technology is going to structure and summarize them. And so Mm. when we think about these conversations, they're upstream of a lot of processes in healthcare, Mm. a lot of potential. They're upstream of all the diagnostics we order um, as clinicians for patients, all the therapeutics um, we also prescribe. They're upstream of clinical trial recruitment, of coding um, for all things revenue cycle to keep the lights on and risk adjustment in the sort of value-based care world, which is a whole other paradigm of how you can 
you know, create, create and capture value as a provider um, in the United States. And then they're also, you know, f- upstream of the most important things, experiences and outcomes. And so when I think about experiences and outcomes, so you mentioned I'm a, I'm a doctor, so um, I'm the founder and CEO, but I'm also a practicing cardiologist. I'll see a handful of patients every month in my free time. So I'll take the shift nobody wants on a weekend. Mm-hmm. And on Memorial Day weekend, I signed up to take cardiology call. So I was in the hospital and in some clinics and I'd walk from room to room to room and I get to use a bridge. That's why it's a big part of why I do it. And I just hit the button, I hit record, and then I'm capturing a conversation with a patient. And we might talk about, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers for a while because mm. there's a lot of Carnegie Mellon DNA in our company and we, we're distributed, but we got a lot of people here in Pittsburgh. Yep. Um, and that's fine. We could talk about politics, you know, the NFL draft, the weather outside, anything we want. A little in bedside what manner is uh, always good to build rapport with the patient, right? It's a, a doctor totally. trained to do that, actually. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, we are third year of medical school. They sort of try to teach you this is how you can build trust with a patient because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's going to have the biggest impact or one of the biggest impacts on their ability to understand and follow through So, and be the healthiest versions of themselves. So we just have this normal organic conversation. I hit stop. I swivel my chair. The note's ready. Everything's in the record. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all good to go. And you know, before a bridge, what I had to do is take chicken scratch, scratch on a piece of paper, like tall, yep. guy in the, tall guy in the Mets hat. And that means Saturday morning, I'm reading tall guy in the Mets hat. And I have to remember who was that guy? Like, who is yeah. that guy? And, and I'm spending hours perseverating over this. And the hospital system's losing revenues because it's too late to bill at that point in time. Um, and it's burning me out. So I'm and let alone accuracy t- and the fear of inaccuracy. Oh, totally. my God. What if my chicken scratch, I remember it wrong or I... You know, the memory is just such a, a fragile and unique thing in humans that, you know, you can juxtapose, right? And you don't even know you yeah. did it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. We all know the one thing that separates great startups from the good ones is product velocity. What does it mean? Product velocity? Fancy term, right? You got your product and you got velocity. Speed. The speed in which your product improves. So can you ship updates? Can you release new features? Can you do bug fixes? Can you iterate on the interface? Can you solve problems for your customers? And can you do it quickly? Because you're not alone. You have competitors and your customers have choices. They may solve their problems by writing their own custom code, or they might use your solution. This is what startups are about. How fast can you get that product velocity going? And so, you know, how how do you supercharge it? Everybody says, okay, yeah, we want to go faster, but you got to go faster intelligently. And Crowdbotics is going to help you do that. They're your CTO as a service. Basically, they provide you with the most optimal architecture to get your product to market as fast as possible. You'll have access to an on-demand product manager and developer talent, and they will help get your app into production 10 times faster than conventional development. Crowdbotics can work with your in-house dev team, or you can just have them work independently. And you own all the IP, you own all the source code, let the folks at Crowdbotics supercharge your product velocity today, no more waiting, get a free build plan at crowdbotics.com slash twist. That's a $4.99 value just for the twist listeners, you get that for free. That's C-R-O-W-D-B-O-T-I-C-S dot com slash twist for a free build plan. So I'm going to share my screen. This is how I used it myself on Memorial Day weekend. I think you can see my phone. Yeah. Um, Beautiful awesome. app. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So this is what I use. I just open this app up on my phone. I'd walk from room to room to room. And so if you're my patient, I'd say, hey, Jason, do you mind if I use this note-taking solution? It's going to help me focus on you instead Don't of- Don't mind at all, Doc. It's great. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So then I hit the button and now we can just sort of do some improv. So, uh, hey, Jason, tell me about your shortness of breath. I heard you're having some shortness of breath. Yeah, you know, it's just the last week or so um, I found coming up and down the stairs in the house, uh, I just started to feel shortness of breath, a little bit of dizziness when I got to the top of the stairs, but uh, I sat down, I took 10 deep breaths and uh, I was fine. Uh, but then when I woke up in the morning, I, uh, I kind of tripped a little bit because I was so short of breath and uh, yeah, the dizziness came back. Okay, got it. And, and so have you noticed that the shortness of breath is worse with activity? Yeah, it's uh, definitely when I'm going up the stairs, it's much worse than yeah. going down the stairs or walking on a flat surface. Have you noticed any chest pain or chest pressure? No chest pain, but I, I did feel a little tingling in my shoulder on the side of my heart. Just, uh, you know, that, that's why I called. Okay, got it. Um, all right. Have you noticed any lighthead? You did mention lightheadedness, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, when I woke up in the morning and then when I got to the top of the stairs, those were the two instances of feeling lightheaded in the last two days. 
Okay. You, you know, I'm looking at my medical record right now, and you have a history of diabetes and hyper. I'm just making this up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, hypertension. Mm-hmm. And you know, your diabetes is totally out of control. Like you're, you're yeah. last. I'm, I'm working on it, doc. Yeah. You know, I saw you at McDonald's last week and you had like six Big Macs in front of you. And uh, those weren't all for me. But yes, I did eat too. I, I have been overeating. I'm 40 pounds overweight and the diabetes isn't good. I got to cut back. I need to yeah. go. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not here to confront you on that. I, I'm only bringing it up because, you know, diabetes, hypertension. When you when you tell me you have shortness of breath, I'm worried it could be related to your heart because you have uh. these risk factors. So I think we should take this seriously. So I want you to come in this afternoon. Let's get an EKG and an echocardiogram. Okay, those are quick tests. That's going to give us a sense of how your heart's functioning. Okay, great. Are they covered or do I have to come out of pocket for those? No, they're covered. They're, they're okay, covered. Great. They're easy. And I can yeah. take them both today or do I have yeah. to schedule them? No, oh, they're let's available get them today. Done. Let's get them I can done. Do it I don't want to yeah. waste too much time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, let's talk about your diabetes. You know, like... Uh, I'm going to ask our nutritionist to call you next weekend. I, I, I want them to start you on a low salt vegan diabetic diet. Okay. I think that's going to help. Can I just do the Ozempic or Wagovi? I keep hearing about those. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, <laughs> that one you might need to uh, pay a lot of money for. So I'm going to uh, ask our nutritionist to call you next week and discuss all these good. new uh, weight loss medications. Um, all right. And then, you know, also today, you know, in terms of your lightheadedness, I think that's that's probably because you we have you on too many medications actually oh, for your blood okay. pressure. Yep. So um, I think your lightheadedness is because of what we call orthostatic hypotension. Um, when you stand up or you go up the stairs, you're feeling lightheaded. So I want you to stop taking your metoprolol. All right. Okay. Stop taking my metoprolol. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last thing, you know, I'm sorry to confront you on this. You're a really famous person. You're traveling the country. You're doing all sorts of stuff. The world. Um, I'm totally willing to take a selfie. It's cool. Oh, sweet. <laughs> and you're under a lot of stress too. Um, yeah, it's true. It's true. Last time we chatted, you were drinking like five bottles of wine every night. Good wine. Oh, look. yeah. It's good wine. Yeah. I mean, I was sharing them. Yeah. Mostly. Okay. So where, where are you at now? I mean, I have uh, two to six glasses of wine a night. Okay. All right. It's a um, range, you know, it depends. Weekends are a, a little heavy. Yeah. All right. It's a little bit better maybe than where we were before. So, yeah. In terms of your alcohol habit, I'm going to ask our behavioral health therapist to call you next week and just sort of talk through your stress and see if, if there are other things that we could get you going with that could that could help. All right? All right. Yeah. Well, you try doing six podcasts a week and we'll see how stressed out you are. I yeah. get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, all right. Last thing. Um, I want you to start taking, you know, for your high cholesterol, I want you to start taking a, a Torvastatin 40 milligrams a day. Okay? Okay. Uh, torvo, torvastat. Yeah, something I got like you. That. Don't worry. We're okay. we're gonna give you something that helps French, you too. But, yeah. <laughs> Torvastat, Latorvastat. Okay. Yeah, Latorvastatin, also called Lipitor. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. All right. Good. I think we have a good plan. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Nope. Just want to get that Ozempic or Wagovi. If you can get it covered under my insurance, that'd be awesome. Okay, we'll talk about it. All right. So we have that conversation now. What the technology does, I can sort of describe in detail, and then we'll look at all the output. Um. When that I was, was a good role play. You and I are good. We got a future. We should yeah, be doing like the when they do a spinoff of uh, of secession and they go back in time <laughs> to their childhoods. You and I could. We could like take the show yeah. on the road. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Then, um, so so that means I can kind of call you in to some of our demos, maybe just absolutely. a quick, quick <laughs> <Absolutely>. swoop in. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. So um, you know when I when I was seeing patients on Memorial Day weekend, I'd walk from room to room to room, and then I'd leave, and I'd realize like I have to do a lot of clerical work that serves three masters. I have to write a note that other people on the clerical team are going to read and they need to understand what's in my head. Like, why did I order an EKG and an echocardiogram? Hmm. But then I also need to structure data. I need to pull out diagnoses. I need to map them to these specific codes that make money for the health system. And that I'm the worst at that, by the way. I do such a bad job that people chart chase me for weeks and months trying to figure out what I was thinking um, because I always do the most nonspecific thing, which is not good. But then the third master or constituent is the most important. It's the patient and the family member. And they're going to go to their portal and they're going to see my note, note. And in my case, they're going to see a term sometimes like transcatheter aortic valvuloplasty. And who knows what that means? And so what a bridge does is it helps with all three constituents. So um, here's the note. Um, and I'm going to show this in a, a web form factor because it's just going to give us a lot more real estate yep. to look at. And then we can kind of geek out a little bit on, on how it works and how the tech 
uh, pulled it off. So here is um, this web app. And okay. I'm not exposing you or anybody to PHI. These are all demos. And here's our conversation. Okay. So we can kind of look at the output. So patient named Jason presents with shortness of breath and dizziness for the past week. Shortness of breath is worse with activity, particularly when going up the stairs, not experienced chest pain, but has tingling in the shoulder on the right on the side of the heart. A lightheadedness upon waking up in the morning and reaching the top of the stairs has a history of diabetes and hypertension, overweight by 40 pounds, admits to overeating and consuming alcohol regularly, two to six uh, glasses of wine per night, more on the weekends amitopolol and has high cholesterol so try to wow. summarize your story right and so that must be some incredible prompt to do that it's, it's got to go through that whole four minute conversation and then summarize all the facts that were in the whole dialogue it's it's a whole bunch of machine learning models we can get into that live below yeah. beside on top of other larger models to basically make it work um, and you can see below in the assessment and plan, it's organizing all the problems we talked about, like shortness of breath and dizziness and diabetes and weight management and orthostatic hypotension and alcohol and high cholesterol. These are all problems it's summarized. And that's so important because that's how you make money too as a clinician. You need to, and that's how you communicate most effectively with other doctors. Right, you right. need to organize your thoughts. And we're organi organizing those thoughts the way Medicare wants to see it. That's sort of mm -hmm. a gold standard. How would the government want this? But it's sort of summarizing a little bit your story and the plan, EKG, ECHO, diabetes, uh, nutritionist to start you on that diet. And we're going to have a um, have them talking about Ozempic and Wegovy and then orthostatic hypotension, you know, discontinue the metoprolol, alcohol, um, behavioral health therapist is going to help you. Here's a really, really important feature. And here's the Lipitor. If I was like, wait, did I mention Lipitor? I don't remember telling Jason about Lipitor. I could highlight any part of this note. Um, mm -hmm. And you the see summary. what happens. Yeah, the summary. And it takes us to that portion of the transcript. Yeah, And then exactly. gives you that thumbs up and thumbs down. Was this, uh, what does it say there? Was this evidence relevant? And so we What's get this, a, it. it's like RLHF, like we're getting feedback yeah. now from our users. And this is a model that was trained Reinforcement with, learning, yep. Yeah. Exactly. For this is there. reinforcement learning. This is a model trained with millions of dollars of data that we were creating in 2018 and 2019 and also like 2020. Um, to be able to build something that can actually build trust with these generative models. Because sometimes you don't know, did that happen or not? And if you don't trust the model, you end up looking at everything. So mm. instead, you could be, you know, you could highlight a word, um, you could highlight a phrase, you could highlight a whole paragraph. But yeah. this is because we had a oh, debate about how much I was drinking and it needs to go. You got to make sure that it wasn't your assessment of my drinking or mine or, you know, maybe some average of the two, whatever. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. documented correctly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And let's just say, I'm like, wait, did we, uh, I don't really remember that part. I want to listen to it again. You could even listen to it. And sure. then, you know, also today, you know, in terms of your lightheadedness, I think that's, that's probably because you, we have you on too many. So hopefully you could hear that, but you can go mm. all the way from the summary to the transcript to the ground truth, which is the audio. How long have doctors been using this in the field? Um, Where are you at? Yeah, probably like about six to eight months now. Wow. And yeah. how many, like for the person who's the tip of the spear, the doctor who's got the most, no, who's not you, how many have they done? And what's their reaction been over the last six months? Yeah, I, the once a clinician starts using this, we are like over 90% of clinicians stick with it. They use it for every single one of their patients. That's how we define it. Every time in clinic, do they use it? Um, it's yeah. like a... Um, oh, so your percentage, hit your batting rate is 100%. Yeah, exactly. What was the most positive feedback and what was the most negative or let's just say scared, cautious feedback that you got? Because yeah. this is, you know, any recording of a healthcare interaction and given the litigiousness of the United States, I can see people framing this multiple ways. Hey, this is a way to document things so that you don't get sued. And if you do get sued, you have the evidence. I could say other people, you know, I've been on different boards over the decades where they say, hey, we should record the board calls. And every law firm's like, don't record the board calls because now we got a transcript and don't transcribe them and write the shortest board notes possible. So it's concise so that we don't have, if, we, if there is a shareholder or any kind of lawsuit, they don't weaponize it against us. So let's walk through the reactions and then this very acute issue. Yeah. To use one of your industry terms around liability go up, down, sideways, left, right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I can, uh, 
Uh, I can answer those and I'll just, I'll, I'll wrap up this demo really quickly too sure. uh, on the other side of that. So University of Kansas Health System, they have like over 2000 clinicians there across any number of different hospitals and clinics. The chief medical information officer is Dr. Greg Ader. He's an ENT doctor. Um, so this technology works across specialties, by the way. It's not purpose built for one. We've been training and annotating to be able to build for all. And um, Greg Ader uses it his first time in clinic. Um, and he told us afterwards, his in, in, immediate reaction was that this is the most important thing to healthcare since the, steth the stethoscope is what he wrote for us. And uh, we can't wait to put that on our website. Um, but that kind of feedback is rolling in on not just a weekly basis, it's, it's happening every single day with clinicians. So I, I truly believe this is the biggest, most profound opportunity for generative AI. This yeah. is the, the, you can't swing a stick in healthcare and not hit a billion dollar opportunity to change something that's so important to every single one of us. And as long as you be believe in the thesis that healthcare is about people and they're having conversations, that it's not about machines, that it's about people mm -hmm. at the end of the day, and it's local too, it's, it's happening all over the place, telemedicine, in person, call centers, then you can believe in all this value that not just we're demoing today, but what's mm -hmm. downstream. Like, for example, What's downstream here is coding. Like we can mm. pull out all the structured data and give you the evidence to support the code. I see that it you says there ICD codes. What does that stand for? Yeah. So that's like this industry um, sort mm. of nomenclature around a type of code that you can bill for, that you can get. Ah, those are the billing codes. Yeah. We hear about these that are, all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So these are billing codes. These HCCs are different type of billing code. But the key piece here is that we're pulling out the billing code, but we're also giving you the evidence that you can, again, go all the way back to the ground truth to Got use it. and defend. So it's like revenue insurance in a way. It's like it's creating a very trustworthy, not just transcript, but these insights that it's pulling. If you're a SaaS or services company that stores customer data in the cloud, then you need to be huh? SOC 2 compliant. You knew that from a third party and you need that third party to close big deals. And if you want to get compliant easier and faster, you need to use Vanta, V-A-N-T-A. -A. Vanta makes it so easy for you to get and renew your SOC 2. On average, Vanta customers are SOC 2 compliant in just two to four weeks. Compare that to three to five months without Vanta. And Vanta can save you hundreds of hours of manual work and up to 85% of compliance costs. This is a total no brainer. And Vanta does more than just SOC 2 compliance. They also automate up to 90% compliance for GDPR, HIPAA, and more. You can't afford to lose out on major customers. We all know that. Listen, it's a hard year. Last year was hard. You can't lose those major customers because you don't have your compliance dialed in. Just work with Vanta. Get your compliance automated and tight and tight is right. Lock down those big deals. Here's the best part. Vanta is going to give you $1,000 off. That's 10 hundies. Get $1,000 off at vanta.com slash twist. That's vanta.com slash twist for $1,000 off your SOC 2. How much time does this save per interaction on average? Right now, doctors are telling us we're saving them two to three hours a day in a clinic. Wow. Um, yeah. If you per Which would, if they work a 10 hour shift, exactly. or 12 hour shift, I mean, we're talking about a 25% lift. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. weird. You know, it's so interesting when I had um, Aaron from Box on, Reed Hoffman on, and um, the founder of um, Airbnb on, mm -hmm. Ryan Chesky. Yeah, I asked them like what percentage of time they were saving. I asked our mesh the same thing. They all said like 20, 30, 40%, depending on the role. Yeah, uh, it feels like we're yeah. all real. Th this current wave of AI innovation out of the gate saves 30% yeah. of people's time. Yeah, that's kind of mind blowing. If you think about on an, an entire economy, totally. now we're seeing it not just in artists making, you know, wedding invitations or you know, uh, SEO writers or people writing blog posts or somebody doing web research, yeah. or travel research or travel planning. I and mean, we're seeing it now with doctors. And as we do this, it's these are people whose time is even more and more uh, valuable. And then you mentioned earlier, there's a shortage. Yep. You get all your doctors to use this and use it well. In year one, you get a free doctor for every four. Yeah. Right. It's every three yeah. doctors, you get the fourth free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just think about what this could save in healthcare. Totally. Uh, and then less mistakes. And the mistakes yeah. are costly. So th that's like, and obviously there's cost in money, but there's also cost in death or missing a diagnosis and, and suffering, right? Which are really hard totally. to even quantify. Although I guess people do quantify them. Yeah. In the health system. And, and 
there's a there's an article that was published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine um, just some months ago that estimated that doctors actually require 27 hours in a day just to do all the work that we put on their plates. <laughs> yeah. So we need this. Uh, I mean, mm. I think one of the most profound bits of feedback that we're getting from users is that they just feel unburdened. They feel mm. like they're operating at the top of their license. They can focus on what they want to do, which is be creative and figure out yep. what is the differential diagnosis? What are all the possibilities here? What should we try? And I think we're also being clear that this this is also an extension of every doctor and nurse's best intention to be there for their patient, even when they're not in front of them. This is the, I guess, the website. You're doing mobile web or an app? This is a this is a mobile app now that's yours. Um, so it's like this React is, or something uh, in a wrapper yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. So it says your conversation is ready for review. Explore your summary. Review changes to your medication. So this is my view of our yeah. interaction. Fantastic. Exactly. So I I get that note. I make my quick edits. Um, on mm. average, it takes like about twenty seconds, if that, for people to quickly make it perfect. And then I say send a record, but send a patient. And now this mm. is what you get. And it's the first step of our machine learning pipeline where Holy we're not cow. just recognizing the words, we're selectively pulling out just the medical moments, not the part about politics, not the part about the NFL Your kids draft. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So if you went home and you could filter by the starred moments, which are like the most important moments, like the next steps. But if you went home and you were like... The starred moments are done by AI. So you're seeing like yeah. little snippets from our conversation or are these done by the doctor? By AI. Yeah. Got it. So the, the AI is... Can I play them or are they just yeah. transcript? Like this. Uh, wow. right, last thing. So do I get the entire conversation or just you can get a, you get the excerpts, but it's kind of up to the the enterprise when we do it. these enterprise deals. So I guess the question then is we have to adjust uh, because you know things that can be leaked will be leaked. You could have a patient who uh, a phone could get hacked and somebody's calls could be leaked in their private conversation with their doctor about something very private, depression you know, whatever, uh, fertility, uh, STDs, whatever, you know, something real obesity. Um, and, uh, so how do you think about that? Yeah, I, we have to jump through all sorts of hoops, you know, in relation to HIPAA, which is, you know, the, the main, uh, one of the main constructs in, in healthcare around data privacy and security and how really like this should belong to the patient. And so we have to jump through those hoops. We have to jump through hoops around where is this data stored and how is it stored? How long is it kept? And what is the data? Is it just transcript? Is it summary? Does it include audio? But this piece of it is, I think, a kumbaya across everyone, which is what we also do for you, for the patient, is we pull out the key pieces, parts of the conversation. We, we decode it. We define everything at a oh, nice. reading level. So, so you're I, explaining to people what an EKG, an echocardiogram, the diabetic exactly. diet, Ozempic. So there's a glossary attached to all this. So exactly. when I felt in this conversation with my doctor that they were speaking French, totally. Now I can kind of catch up. And totally. so that whole intimidation and like not questioning your doctor, et cetera. And now I would suppose, you know, I might want to communicate with the doctor and double click on one of these and have a threaded discussion. So and annotate this in some way. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that's probably on the roadmap. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think one of the ways we approximate for that right now mm. is this, where you turn the app off, maybe in a week, you get a notification like this. And it says, hey, like, Jason, we think your doctor talked about Ozempic. Mm. Um, and we're pulling out just the key moments and reminding you, like keeping it top, a top of mind, like yes. an endocrinologist to talk about Ozempic. I told you to take a, a Torvastatin. You could play that digest if we've enabled audio and the enterprise is okay. We've jumped through all those hoops. Yep. If you say no, then you give us annotations. You tell us where we went wrong and then that improves our model as well. So we get that Got sort it. of that data network effect on both sides, not just the clinicians, but also the patients. Well, you know, I think it's uh, this is a double opt-in kind of thing. Uh, yep. You did the courtesy of, hey, would it be okay for me to use this if I'm an oldster? And I yep. don't want this, uh, or I'm a paranoid person, or as you mentioned, a celebrity. Yeah. And I don't want there being a record of any of this, uh, because you're criticizing my alcohol consumption. Um, I think you were trying to do this with Chamath. Um, but uh, <laughs> he's the one who's drinking far too much wine, I think, uh, even as good as it is. Uh, so interesting. That's, uh, yeah, and this is a, so many societal best practices and thinking about this. Young people... I mean, they're recording themselves doing all kinds of crazy, stupid stuff. So doing yeah. <laughs> something intelligent like this, yeah, they're going to be fine. And then the people who are part of the paradigm who don't want the stuff recorded, well, paradigms 
uh, don't die, people do. So they will be part of the paradigm that doesn't want to record this. But my Lord, can you imagine if I had this since I was going to the doctor since I was, yeah. you know, whatever, eight years old, and I had my entire history, totally. then the AI could look at it and say, you know, the shortness of breath thing, he had asthma when he was a kid, and uh, he totally. never brought this up. And he had an inhaler. And uh, by the way, like, uh, you know, maybe we should screen for something. Maybe he's got some lung deficiency. Like right? the AI is going to find stuff in here. That's going to be incredible. I mean, it's extraordinary. So how do you charge for this? You charge per interaction or like 25 bucks an interaction or you just charge a flat rate or we try to doctor? make it. As, yeah, we try to make it as simple as possible per doctor per year or mm. per clinician per year. Mm. And we go deep on the other side of this note, we integrate mm. it all into the right places in the medical record because there's Got discrete it. fields. There's, you know, part of this is not just the generative piece. It's all the copy and pasting you might have to do if we mm. weren't integrating. Like we're going to make sure we already do um, with these large health system uh, customers, but across all the EMRs, we'll make sure to get all the data in the right places. When you're selling to B2B buyers, you really want to get your pitch in front of the decision maker, the person who gets to sign the check, because these upper level execs, they're the ones who make the purchasing decision. Everybody can have an opinion on the team. Of course, it's 2023, but there's always somebody where the buck stops and that buck stops on their desk and doesn't get into your bank account. These high level folks are hard to find. They're hard to target on social media platforms, but LinkedIn is the social network for business and they have 930 million members ready to do business with you. And that includes the 180 million senior level decision makers. Plus, don't tell anybody, there's also 10 million C-level executives there. That's a ton of purchasing power. LinkedIn ads is built specifically for B2B marketers. No other platform in the world can offer these eyeballs and you can target them, obviously, by their location, the size of their organization, their vertical, and their title. When you think about business, I want you to just think about LinkedIn. LinkedIn equals business. Business equals LinkedIn. It's that simple, folks. When you present them with an opportunity, they will, of course, be in the mindset to receive that because they're not posting pictures of their food from Italy on vacation. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit towards your next campaign by going to linkedin.com slash next unicorn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash next unicorn. Terms and conditions apply because LinkedIn is so generous to the This Week in Startups audience. All right, I got to ask you the obvious question. Yeah. Uh, and you're a cardiologist, correct? Yep. Don't take it the wrong way. Yeah. But in 10 years, if you, in a hundred interactions, like the average hundred interactions, how many of them would, you know, 10 cardiologists out of 10 cardiologists give the same basic feedback for? It's a great question. I, I think what you're, Cardiology is an interesting field because it is, there's a lot of dollars in cardiology. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of research studies. There's a lot of algorithms that we all sure. follow almost too robotically sometimes. Hur heuristics. Yeah. Yeah. If you exactly. do this, do that. If you do this, do that. So everybody's going to look at this just like the writers who are on strike right now and say, aren't you just building this in order to replace the doctors or maybe replace the first third of interactions? And so I'm looking at it and I'm going, you know what? Uh, I can't afford healthcare. I'd rather just pay you 50 bucks to talk to your AI and just, or, hey, I'm a, I'm a, a country in Africa that uh, has no medical system. And the idea of getting a meeting with a cardiologist is for this 10 million person population impossible. It's a frontier market. Or it's in the South here in the US, there's somebody on the Appalachian uh, in the mountains in Appalachia, and they don't have any health insurance. Your AI can beat nothing already. You would agree? Take I, a second I, to think this through because it's yeah, going to be, yeah, gonna be in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> if, if, it was your, if it was your sibling and they had a choice, no doctor or talk to your AI, what would you tell them to do? That's a good question. Our AI, just to sort of kind of recenter and, not, and not ma make sure not to over pitch what we're delivering to mm -hmm. the market right now. We are not delivering a chatbot experience where you can kind of talk to a AI doctor. Of course, sort of you're transcribing it, you're categorizing, yeah. we get that. In five years, when you have yeah. 100,000 interactions, we both know where this is headed. In five years, we got 100,000 of these in here. AI continues to grow at a modest pace in terms of its fidelity. Would you rather your sibling not go to a cardiologist at 50 years old when they had symptoms or talk to the AI in five years? Yeah, I mean, absolutely the latter. And I yeah. think 
that there's a responsible way to do it though. And I think that's, sure. those are the solutions that are going to win. Like in healthcare, especially, it feels like the ultimate sort of moat is around trust and, mm. and trust, trustworthy generative AI, trustworthy AI is probably some combination of, of credibility. Like, have you, mm. have you shown that this works, like that it can be sort of kind of safe for maybe at mm. least the frontline kind of issues that people have on a daily yeah. basis? Is it reliable? You know, once mm. you hit it once with the same question, is it the same answer or is it a different answer every time? You know, that's mm. one of those issues that we see with some of these models. And is it transparent? And mm. I think what we as a company are trying to do is build those, those mm. three pillars into the DNA of everything that we do. So we've published tons of peer-reviewed computer science papers about how do you point a transformer at healthcare use cases. Mm. Um, we do that in the clinical research world now as well. We validate and we get tr as rigorous as we can. We build our own models with our own proprietary data sets. So our own speech recognition system internally, we call EARS, the multilingual system that we mm -hmm. fine tuned with healthcare data to get words like Ozempic and we go V. Um, but then on the LLM side, we have our own in-house LLM called Elms. And we also use the power tools that are out there, but we always make sure to build those models like, like I demonstrated that give you that transparent, yeah. that transparency. Like, where did this come from? How did it get mm -hmm. generated? So I think. Whatever that time horizon is in 10 years, 20 years, five years, um, can AI start to be an incredibly good triage nurse mm -hmm. um, or clinician in an urgent care and deal with a lot of the issues that all of us have? Absolutely. And I think that's awesome. So that's yeah, like yeah. fantastic. That's what we need. Um, Value is mean, just right going to move up. Just think about the internet. There's whatever billion or so people not on the internet yet. If they got Starlink, and they get access to Wikipedia and a bunch of health websites. That's going to really help emergency yeah. care or whatever. Uh, and then you start thinking about the AI impact. You know, there's going to be somebody in the field who has some symptoms and they don't realize that's indigestion versus a heart attack or a stroke. Lives are going to be saved. So yeah. I, I'm super excited about the lowering the cost and increasing the accessibility of this. I think that's like, this is a, this is this incredible fulcrum that you found, which is there's an acute problem right now. Yeah, save time for doctors who are quitting because they're nobody, they're overworked doing 27 hours and a 12 hour shift. Okay. <laughs> they're underappreciated. They quit constantly and they're exhausted and they're underpaid yep. and they're sued too often. Now you take this great fulcrum, you make them superhuman, and then uh, the AI is going to really be able to take two thirds of, uh, you know, interactions maybe off their plate, and they can focus on the most important ones. Totally. totally. I mean, that must happen already. Like the, the idea of even taking your temperature at home, or your blood pressure at home, or even knowing yeah. how many hours you slept last night. Well, that's something that didn't exist whatever 50 years ago, right? Like, yeah, yep, exactly. So. And, and my patients as a cardiologist sending me Apple watch strips. It's, oh, do that they do that? Game changer. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. accurate enough to be of value. Absolutely. Uh, it's really good at detecting atrial fibrillation. So um, there are patients who've been di I've diagnosed with AFib because of the Apple Watch. And then we kind really? of pull them through. Yeah. Is there a, like, uh, is that the proper path or is it like chest based um, more accurate? Well, the 12 lead, you know, the chest base is going to give you a lot more detail on what's going on. Yeah. But the Apple Watch is validated to, to do mm -hmm. a good job on detecting that diagnosis, that issue. So I wonder if they're going to uh, get that glucose monitor to work. You know, there's that rumor yeah. that they're going to have a watch that will be able to tell your glucose level yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That's, I yeah. mean, is that possible? Is that real? Blood pressure too. Blood pressure would be a game changer for me. Like how would they get blood pressure through a watch? I mean, I know you can buy like the Weavings makes a smart blood pressure cup and that yeah. will go to the cloud, but yeah. Yeah. Is that even possible? You think with a watch? A blood I mean, pressure? there are people who are trying to approximate blood pressure even from EKG strips. So huh. with enough data, you know, and you know, maybe you can start to validate some sort of instrument that can create a proxy for a blood pressure at the very least. And maybe that yeah. in and of itself can be valuable. Well, congratulations. You started on this years ago and the world caught up. And now uh, everybody's going to probably want to throw money at you uh, after four years of you begging them to support your vision and them saying it's too early. And now they're too late. And all these investors are going to have to play catch up now and pay a little bit of a higher price uh, for not having the vision to back you earlier. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you're hiring right now. Uh, I take we it. We are. I, yeah. yeah absolutely. So let's get some positions filled here. Go to abridge.com. I guess you got a careers page up there. I'm guessing. We do. 
Yeah. So go to the careers page. What do you most need? What do you most acutely need? Uh, what roles and, and what's the culture and type of person you want to have at the company? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a refrain that we use all the time. We all hear all the time. But this company is absolutely mission driven. Mm -hmm. If you want to come in and see impact today um, on a rolling basis, feedback from all sorts of clinicians and patients and administrators across some of the biggest health systems in the world, and, and you're training a model and you ship it um, in a matter of minutes and you get that feedback, like that's the kind of culture we have. We're building responsibly, but we're building incredibly quickly. And we're getting mm -hmm. feedback loops um, that are just like uh, instant. Yeah, you got to check these things, right? You incredible. got people. Yeah, you yeah. got to check them. But we have the yeah. instrumentation in place where we can benchmark very quickly quantitatively and decide to ship. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think one of the best compliments we got, compliments we got from an early customer was a bridge on Monday was amazing. And it was a better on Tuesday and even better mm. on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that's how yeah. that's the speed that we're going at right now, which in healthcare yeah. is a totally new thing. It's all happening. Uh, and if you're not using chat GPT four every day, you're nuts. Uh, if you're listening to my voice, buy everybody on your team 20 bucks a month for chat GPT four, you can go pay for Poe or start using Bard, but turn all the experiments on and then have your teams using it every day. Uh, and see if they can get 20 30 percent faster at their jobs and make your company more profitable or get to profitability uh, this is an incredible revolution it is not undersold uh it is not oversold it is undersold uh, totally. I think we, you and i who were in the trenches with this you can just see how this is going to compound totally. uh, i just had tim urban on i don't know if you've ever seen tim urban's yeah. favorite famous chart it's like yeah. progress and then boom. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm making a line that is just a very slow, gradual growth line. Hopefully, producer Brian has it handy on the show. It and it's like puts a little stick figure on the line, and then the line goes hockey stick straight up, like more than a hockey stick, like a skyscraper. And it's like, yeah, this thing is going to become. In I mean, it's passing the Turing test already. So I, I and vertical AI is always better, but there it is: human progress and time. <laughs> yeah. We are on the cusp of something bizarre. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, doctors are going to be learning stuff. They just, you, the, the idea that you're a doctor and you have to do trial and error and, yeah, you know, triangulate around what's going on. Like you said, you're starting to get Apple watch data. Now imagine like you've got a thousand patients in your network as some insurer yeah, and it starts sending messages to your clinicians. Like this person's heart rate and this, uh, and you both get an alert. You're both dumped into a chat room and it's like. And the ambulance driver is on the way to their location. Like, that's the world we're going to live in, yeah. where, like, all of a sudden you're going to get a phone call from your doctor. And it's like, hey, Dr. Shiv. And it's gonna be like, yeah, the ambulance is on the way. And you're like, why? And it's like, uh, well, we saw you're having this happen with your heart. We just want to be safe. And, uh, yeah, they'll have the uh, whatever that drug is they put under your tongue if you're having a yeah. stroke. Yep. Is that thing they do? Yeah, they nitro. give you nitroglycerin and aspirin. and yeah, like, oh, you know, you're with the nitro and the, the ambulance is two minutes away. Here it is, like yeah. an Uber coming to. I mean, it's going to be a crazy world. The fact is, like, people have gone flying off their mountain bikes alone. And yeah. if you have the latest iPhone and it has, like, the crash detection. Yep. And, like, somebody got knocked out. They were knocked out, unconscious. And somebody came and saved their life because of their Apple watch yeah. and a, f a phone. I mean, this is going to be, inc I was an EMT for totally. a little bit. And like, just what's going to happen in emergency medicine combined yeah. with this, I used to have to sit there. I, I was, I did dispatch too for an ambulance mm -hmm. and they would be wailing down the BQE in Brooklyn, yelling at me, the vitals, I'm yeah. writing the vitals down. I'm on the phone uh, yeah. with Victor Memorial Hospital reading or, you know, Mamamides and I'm reading the patient's blood pressure to the uh, nurse at the emergency room while they're screaming to me and it's like, this stuff is going to be like all totally tied and imagine, together. It's going to be. A and imagine if you had a bridge, like even for those calls and you're just yeah. getting the summary already and you can communicate that to the hospital. Absolutely. That, that's the thing that's blowing my mind more than anything else in 2023 is that healthcare is moving at the pace that it is with this technology. Is it really and moving faster finally? It is, it is moving so fast. Why, why did they go from not moving fast to moving fast? Is it just because it's so broken? And they're so exhausted and they, they're finally ready to capitulate and use the technology? Yeah, we just pushed way past the point. Um, mm -hmm. And on the other side of the pandemic, clinicians just collapsed. And it was uh -huh. enough was enough. We had to do something. We have to do something. 
And so it's desperation. We need tools yeah. and these tools are working. I think that's the other thing about generative AI. It's we're coming in and we're just putting, we're just saying, use the product. You will see like mm. the value is there. This is not presentation. It is practice. We have thousands mm. of doctors using it today. Yeah. So yeah, the, Amazing. the, the proof is there. Dr. Shiv, I'm glad you're in the world. Uh, you can follow Shiv, D-E-V-R-A-O on Twitter. A bridge is the company. You can go to their uh, jobs career page. Continued success. I'm just glad you're out there in the world doing this as God's work. If you're an atheist, it's humanity's work. Okay, pick whatever you like, um, but you're going to save a lot of lives. And for Thank that, you so on much, behalf Jason. of uh, the audience, humanity, I, uh, as the host of this week in startups, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jason. <laughs> my unique physician. Total uh, privilege. Where are you based? Thank you so where much. Where are you based? I'm in Pittsburgh. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Very nice. Carnegie uh, Mellon. Uh, I mean, what a university, huh? I mean, yeah. the, the talent coming out of there is just yeah, extraordinary. Totally. I went there yeah. a lifetime ago and then became a cardiologist, then became the corporate VC. And now I'm just trying to put it all together here. But uh, the, you can buy an amazing home there. Yes, you uh, can. F- you can buy like a mansion there for 300 grand. <laughs> it's crazy. Like You can have an incredible lifestyle here. You can, y- we've got, we don't, might, we might not have like 10 of everything, but we have like at least a couple of all the things you probably need. We have a vegan yeah. Polish restaurant that is like one of now, the best in point, the world. You know? I was on CNBC and I knew somebody who was like at the endowment of Carnegie Mellon. He's a very proud person yeah. from Pittsburgh. And they were like, do you think like Amazon HQ2 is going to be in Pittsburgh or this place? Yeah. Or you think it's going to be my, I'm like, Pittsburgh. I'm like, yeah. young people don't want to be in Pittsburgh. They're going to want to yeah. be in New York, Miami, Austin. San Diego, Los Angeles, and I, and maybe DC. So I, I'm going to go with like Austin, New York are going to be placed. And it was DC, New York. Yeah. And he was like, what the heck? Like, why are you just, <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm going based on a stereotype. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> but it's, and then he's like sending me pictures of like this incredible, beautiful, bucolic yeah. countrysides and houses. It's gorgeous. It's Apparently awesome. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It has all the vibes here and yeah. c- great companies here, like a sister company of ours, Duolingo. Another, of course, union, yeah. another union square ventures company. Um, oh, you're all union the big- square? Fred yeah. Wilson, my guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're yeah. USV and Bessemer and, and Fantastic. we'll announce some more. Congrats. Yeah. Well, shout out to USV for another winner and we'll see you all next time on this week's awesome. Bye-bye.